This is a busy house. Most of the time, I, my husband high timetable doesn't match because he work in the hospitality business. Sometimes he can work in the night and in the morning when you wake up, he's sleeping. So most of the when I wake up, I'm always rushing to get things ready to go. So most of our prayer room is the car. We rush into the car and then while we are driving to school, we pray in the car. On the way to church on Sunday morning, we use the drive as well to read the gospel and pray together. When you go to church on Sunday, uh, we share our life actually, uh, according to the gospel of the day. So each of us give his opinion, how he, he learn, what, what, what can he get from the gospel, how can he apply to his own life? So that's what we do when it's like 15 minute drive. So, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Stefan Amouye. I'm coming from Ivory Coast and I've been uh, here in USA since 2012. I'm working as an um, assistant general manager at uh, one of the uh, hotels uh, here in Allen, Texas. He's very religious man. When you talk about God and things, he's really deep inside. And also, he was very kind, you know, like these small, simple things like flower, a poem. He was funny. At the same time, he's religious. I'm committed in the church as a colite. I'm in the Knight of Columbus. And we have uh, our African community we call uh, African Fellowship. Uh, when I bring in, in my family, I'm trying to teach them what the value of the church is. And I tell my kids, whatever I do to you, don't think that I'm doing it for myself. I do it for you. Because when you go outside, people will look at you and think about what you do inside the house. Sometimes you think like uh, prevent a kid doing something can hurt the kids. Yes, it may hurt him, but it hurts can, you can learn from that. I was thinking of having one child because I was more thinking about my career, my professional life and how to deal with a child. I felt maybe many children, I won't be able to give them what they need. And then when I met my husband and we were together, we become more deeper in the faith. And then I learned more about the church value in terms of family. You know, when we're doing the, the, the formation for marriage, talking about how your marriage have to be open to life, really felt like God is the one who leads. He's so proud of us sometimes when we think that we choose the number of children we'll have. I become humble to know that when a child has to go, you are a channel that God is using, mm -hmm. that I have to let myself be a channel. And God is the one who made me. So he know what I'm able to, you know, to carry. God open your womb and God will close your womb. That once that belief becomes strong into me, I let it go and I surrender to God. When you're young, you never thought that one day you'll be a father, you know. You enjoy life and do things. And suddenly you, you, you fell in love with someone that you want to share your life. And then you start thinking, how many children I'm going to have? And sometimes you feel like uh, um, we receive a lot of blessings from God through our kids. It's a joy, happiness, a commitment. I did not decide to have five kids and stop at five kids or two kids. Now I, you know, I let it go during our time and the children came as God wished them to come. Chris, the first one, he loved music. Responsible and dependent, 
boy like you have that strong will what you call strong will child since he's young you know that as i said the strong will is that like authority is that authority feeling he's the eldest you know trying to put things in place Johan is a very sweet boy mm. he grew up to be very caring each member of the family before even ask you something he will ask you about how was your day how are you doing and he's kind of the gap between the boys and the girl he's like the best friend of the girls you know he's our soccer player and guitar player he also. plays also a clarinet and bazoo we have Mary Roxanne she's 10 is the princess of the house mm -hmm. <laughs> we use call her the sunshine mm -hmm. she's the singer the entertainer you know you'll be sitting in the sofas and she'll be like can i play dance for you can i make a show she will always like have small papers and say you have a show tomorrow 10 a.m and give us to her trainer sisters and come and dance for her so she's the dancer the girls the little sisters even respond more to her than me Tiffany, she is uh, eight. She can be that sweet, silent, and the day she decides that it's my time to blossom and she will be talking, dancing, doing things like you. You are like, oh, Tiffany, today I think that is the best day of your life. And then the next day she wants to be by herself, reading a book, you know. And the last born, Janice, she's the smiling, laughing one. She's very bright. I feel happy and look forward every day because you have something to do, you know, you have people to care of. I think everything is multiplied and I feel fulfilled. Yeah, I feel like I find my call. <laughs> <laughs> She's my wife. She loves children. I see that she's really taking care of the kids. I trust in her. The Holy Trinity dwells in, our, in your family. So I see my wife as a princess of Jesus, always. And since Jesus takes care of me, and I think he used her to take care of my family, my kids, and take care of me. And he's like the disciplined person in the house. It's, it's, it's help to have somebody, you know, represent the authority. And when the kids I were very small, the boys, he will play with them, sing with them, dance with them. But at the same time, you know, he disciplined them. So I like this both sides. Being part of a big family, you get a sense of belonging and you'll never be really lonely. Even in times where you do want to be lonely, you can never really get quiet. So those are the things that at the time maybe you don't value more, but like as you get older and you'll very appreciate those big moments where you're all together, like family settings, and it's amazing to have many siblings. For me, the biggest maybe challenge when you, 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 you think of having, raising multiple ch children is finance. You think about how financial stress you could be for me personally, teach me to let it go. Let God being the one who is leading our boat. Before the children, I, I used to be somebody who liked to plan. With the children, I learned to let it go and leave to God. And God will put things in place for you, and it's happened, you know. You know what? You are the first father, the creator of everything. You know better than me what you have given to me because I'm a steward right now. My kid, I'm not the one who created them. I just bring them in life. You give it to me. So you have a plan for them. Help me to find a way to raise them in that, in that line and uh, make me good so that they become good by, watch, by looking at me as a father. Because everything that you do, sometimes you think it's me who is doing, you know, me, not for their good. And sometimes you love them, you don't want to hurt them, you know, but you feel like uh, what I'm doing is not for the purpose of hurting them, 
but to help them to grow. I would say that I'm very grateful to be born in a family that is Catholic and that Catholicism has been special to me since a young age. Just seeing the Eucharist and participating in the Eucharist is something special. And the fact that I got to do that from a young age, and I could give a particular thanks to my father who has never been shy to answer any of my questions, whether it's uh, dumb or not. His answers have really like questioned my belief and strengthened it. He will guide me and not like reject any of my questions, saying like, why don't, why don't you believe that? He really guides me towards the right path. Christmas with a big family is amazing because first of all, you get things done quicker, like setting up the trees and everything. Not only that, you have more fun doing it because it's not some type of, it's not lonely. You're not just, you know, sitting alone and decorating. It's more like a game, more like an activity you're actually doing. And it makes it more entertaining. It makes, it really makes Christmas come alive, you know. We try to put that excitement, matching pajamas, we do that. We, we, we do some. Now I learn to bring ginger cookies. I'm a Christmas fan. Mm. I like the songs, the colors. We're always together as a family during Christmas, no matter what. We try as a family to keep Christmas inside the church. Mm -hmm. That is about going to mass. We are trying to, for the kid to know that, yes, is a, there is all that excitement outside, but that day was the day of the birth of Jesus Christ. So our time should be towards going to church. Christ, that Christ in front of the mass is the mass of Christ, you know? And who is the Christ? Is Jesus Christ our Savior, and is a gift. And we teach the kid that. I noticed that Christmas is family. Everything is about family. We have Joseph, St. Joseph, we have Mary, and we have Jesus. It's the Holy Family. We celebrate the Holy Family. God comes down, became man, so that man gets into a family. What we wanted to teach to our children is to know that you can spend time outside your family, but there's a time that you should praise God for what He has given to you. You're going to be a father, you're going to be a mom. Please, on Christmas is the day of the family. Parenting is about example. It's about how you, the mom and the dad, react to each other and sort things out and live, you know, because kids learn more by example than by say. If you want your child to be prayerful, you should start praying. I know when I'm doing a lot of the rosary, that's, you know, that is my period of a lot of pray because I'll end up seeing the girls when they're playing babies, doing the rosary. Because if you say things only by your mouth and you don't do it yourself, they'll end up doing what you are doing, not what you tell them to do. Hear them out. Give you time to your kid to talk to you, you know. This world is so difficult because of the TV, because of the phone, try to be time of just talking about things so that it will be easy for your child when there is something to run to you first to ask you everything in school about his friends, about things, because you, you put that display for kids to talk to you. I think it's, uh, it's difficult for a family to raise a kid. It's, it's a passion to have it as a dad or as a mom. What I can ask is uh, God. He's the one who gives you words. He's the one who gives you that peace within you and try to listen to what your son is going through. Praying, ask God to give us strength to guide your, your, your family. Because if we can't do it at home, no one can do it. God speak to us through our kids, through your wife, Living through me, danger, yeah. through the church. The only thing you have to do is to listen the word and read the word of the Lord. You know, what you wish for your child is the values, you know, good values as a human being, and also wish for them to have a good partner in life. 
build the insights of the person you know guide and that stick in my mind that you know what is the value of my child front of when you go out and is confronted with an issue where did how did he refer to make a decision to god how to be that strong you know that in that, that you be at peace that when he leave the house you know that he know that god is there to guide him you know how to make decision how to choose in the person what is the value of the person is not the material stuff but is that the value within the person how we identify that yeah can i read the gospel of today it was so beautiful I'm going to share with you. I'm reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. What I love about my kids is uh, being with them, helping them at school, during their school activities, and also sharing faith. Every time when I am with them, I ask them, what, what do you don't understand about the scriptures? And when they give a passage, it's a time for me to explain to them what the passage means and how to apply in, in our life. Um, when I'm talking, like my father in heaven talking to me, the way I talk to him, the way I relate to him, I want my kids to relate to me like that. So I try to make sure that uh, they understand some of the things that are uh, around them, life outside. Thank you, my Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I'm very grateful for my family and the way we pray. There's, that, there's times where on Thursdays, we sit down together and we do the rosary or we go to adoration and those times can be very uh, peaceful. And as a big family, there's a, there's a huge range of ages. So you have the people, we have the oldest like me and my brother who are focused and you have my little siblings who don't really know what is going on, but like they're trying to go, they're going along with everything but you can just see that there's something special in what we're doing. And praying as a family, especially the rosary, has taught me that it, this is important, that there is something special in prayer. One day I said, hey guys, I'm committed to the church, so you need to be committed too. So I asked my son, Chris, what he wanted to do. He said, I wanted to, since I'm playing uh, instruments, I wanted to play in the choir. I said, oh, go for it, so. In this big family and having God's gift of uh, musical talent or musical musicianship, it's very fun because as a big, as a family, there's a lot of chaos in that and being together, like jamming out on some tunes or some some songs that we just make up on the spot, just seeing those smiles just makes my heart just really glow. Oh, music is one way like we connect with each other. It's amazing how our family is very musical, and I think that's thanks to my mom and dad. We always, you know, had music in the house. Always had like some type of song playing, and it's nice because it's like another language we can all communicate with. The second one, Johan, he didn't know exactly what to do. I said, hey, come with me, come and serve at the altar. So that's how I brought them to, to serve, to commit themselves at church. I love the community in the Catholic Church. I love how people are always willing to help and listen. And, and I love that we're united in faith so that everyone understands that we're all going our personal journeys to find Christ, but we're all willing to help each other get there. And that's just like, it's an amazing community. And it's so rare to find in a world that's like so divided. Then I realized it's not about me. It's about God, that no one came to see Johanna Muye. They came to see and worship Christ. And so that helped me focus on God during mass. And I love being an altar server. Instead of just watching and being on the sideline, I feel like I'm part of this, you know, procession, like this of mass, like it really makes me, you know, participate in mass. And I'm so happy that I got the opportunity to serve in mass. Now the two the girls, the first one, Roxanne, started playing instrument as well, trumpet. And she joined the choir, I think maybe because of her brother. And uh, the other one, Tiffany, also joined the choir. 
uh, the school choir. So I think that's how we we run our faith in the church, was the service to the church. People ask me, how do you manage having children, taking care of your husband, the household? So from the community where I am, people around me, you know, some people say, if Gladys can do it, maybe I can do it. Because as immigrant, like first generation immigrant is a bit different from, you know, second generation or third generation. You have to learn the society at the same time, dealing with multiple children and figure out the, the, the life here so it can become difficult. So I think people get encouraged by our examples when they see that we, we are trying. Everyone has his place in this world. And if God, I choose it as a blessing that God choose me to lead that soul in this world. You know, I've been the channel, but you know, he's the soul by himself and he has his own purpose why God bring that child in the world. So God know why he bring him and God will help you raise that child. True peace and my true joys, realize that my greatest achievement is my family. And that makes me really at peace of seeing my children growing and seeing what they can do for themselves and the role you can play as a role model in the life of your children. We are the Amouye's family and we are Joyce!